Okay, now that we've looked at some of the basic ideas underlying temporal discounting, it's important to then think about what some of the implications might be if we use that model and trust what it's telling us about the desirability of things in different contexts, contexts beyond simple choices about chocolates this week or the next. In particular, for our purposes, we're interested in what happens in the long run. Over the very long term, what does a particular discount rate mean? And what, what will the differences between different possible discount rates mean? Well, I'm hoping that many of you are familiar with, this is the sort of thing someone should have taught you in high school mathematics, and if not, well, maybe it's about time to learn. You should have learned about compound interest. Because in effect, discounting works much the same way that compound interest works. So what do we mean by that? Well, if I was to go to my bank right now and open up one of the best sorts of savings accounts they have, interest rates are pretty low. So I might manage to get a 3.5% a, a interest rate, right? Uh, that's if I promise that they can have the money for at least three months or maybe 12 months or something like that. Now, they probably want a minimum deposit of $1,000 or something, but just to keep the numbers a bit simpler for me, I'm going to wonder what happens to $100 with this 3.5% interest rate if the interest compounds. That is, you apply it in the first instance to the $100, but then the next year the interest applies to the initial sum put in and any interest earned in the first year. And the calculation for the first year looks like this. We ask ourselves, what's 100 dollars multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.035 that's the three and a half percent right in the second year we multiply 100 by 1.035 twice right we first multiply it by 1.035 for the first year and then again for the second year so let's just quickly work out what these are so in this case it's three dollars fifty interest that you get in the first year Right, so it's $103.50. Now I'll bring up my calculator. So the answer is I'm going to have $107.12 after the second year. Right. You'll notice that the difference between these two years is more than $3.50. Okay, it's because that's the interest compounding. Now, if you waited a reasonably long time, right, so let's say 20 years, so the, the sum I'd have to write out here would be $100 times, and then in here we're gonna have 1.035 times 1.035 times da, 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 da. there'll be 20 of these right so 20 times 20 lots or another simpler way to write that would be 100 times 1.035 to the power 20 okay just ask yourself without even working out ballpark figure what do you think is going to happen is it the case that your money is going to be I mean, just you know it's going to be at least this much. What's 20 times $3.50? Well, that's actually the same as 10 times $7. So you know you're going to earn at least $70 interest, right? So that's an absolute smallest possible amount. I shouldn't write it here. It's misleading. The smallest possible amount we could get would be 170 okay. But because the interest compounds, we expect it to be more than that. Well, let's pull up the calculator. Um, let's go... 1.035 to the power 20. Okay, and we get 1.98. And now we multiply 100 by that, and we get the answer 198. Your money has nearly doubled. Okay, and this is substantially better than 170. 
Now, let's try that again, but this time with a slightly more competitive interest rate. So, we know that 20 years, $100 goes to 198 if it's 3.5% interest. Okay. Now let's consider a 5% interest rate. So what we want to work out is 100 times 1.05 to the power 20. Trusty calculator again, 100, whoops, times 1.05 to the power 20. And now we're up to $265, whoops. A modest change in interest rate, a pretty dramatic change, a $67 change between this figure and this figure when you have a considering over a 20 year time scale.